Okay, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we've got a really great presentation here for you. Um, and, uh, you know, in the spirit, uh, before I uh, bring our presenter up here, uh, this is all in the spirit of sort of the uh, Jamf and metal mentality here, uh, where it's uh, Jamf and Microsoft working together uh, to do some unified endpoint management uh, with specifically the enterprise mobility and security team. Um, so we're here making new friends. Uh, so let's give a warm welcome to Vlad from Microsoft, the Senior Product Marketing Manager. Thanks, Vlad. Thank you. All right, can you guys hear me? Thanks, Nick. Um, I appreciate uh, the applause. Uh, my name is Vlad. I'm from the EMS Product Marketing Team uh, at Microsoft. Um, it's really exciting to be at JNOC. It's my first time. Um, so it's really cool to be here and learn more about Mac and iOS in general. Um, so my goal today was to basically give you a little more information about what Microsoft has to offer if you are an organization that uses Jam for Apple device management. And if you have other devices in your environment or you're looking for managing not just devices but also identities and data, that way you can consider Microsoft um, as your partner in this as well. Um, I have some demos in this presentation. Um, some are recorded uh, because they're on end user devices and I didn't bring them with me and some are actually live demos. So I'm hoping the demo guys will be nice to me today as well. So I'll have a lot of demos. My goal is to keep you entertained and um, I hope to have time at the end to answer your um, questions as well. Um, quick intro, um, you, most of you probably went through this already. Um, I'm gonna have some stats on the slide but the point of the slide is that, hey, we all understand now that the world that uh, we live today is different from the way it was maybe 10, 15 years ago, right? Uh, people don't just work from the office on a Windows device anymore. Uh, you see people working outside the office and in, in coffee shops using various devices. So that'd be iOS, Mac, Android, Windows devices, and so on. And because of that, the experiences of end users are changing um, and their expectations are changing as well. And in addition to what um, end users expect, um, the whole idea of um, security perimeter has changed as well. You heard that from Keynote um, today, and I believe yesterday as well. Well, again, the whole concept of being able to create a network and being able to protect by firewall doesn't really work anymore because a lot of devices, data, applications are no longer on premises, right? You have cloud services that people are accessing, um, things like Office 365 from Microsoft, Dropbox, Google productivity suites, and so on. And now you have devices that are not just located on premises, right? So your Windows or Mac device. Now you have devices that are all over the place around the world. Um, and those devices can directly access uh, cloud services, email applications, and so on from the cloud. So how do you deal with that new world um, that we live in today uh, while also having the security that your CISO might need and being able to provide a great end user productivity uh, experiences for your uh, people across different devices, right? That's one of the challenges we have been working for the past year, uh, past two years at Microsoft. Um, and we believe, you know, we're able to figure that out by being able to build the applications, build the management software, the operating system itself to provide that great uh, productivity experience, but also um, that it's also secure at the same time. And from your perspective, we also hear that it's, it's pretty confusing out there because you see many different vendors I'm including Microsoft, being able to provide all these different solutions to help you manage devices, help you figure out how to secure identities, um, and so on, right? So there's lots of solutions out there in the market, and Microsoft does have a, a unique view of this world, just like Jam has their own view as well. Um, our view is that we want to build this integrated um, solution that provides all of that, right? Not just being able to device, uh, manage devices, but also being able to secure your identities, enable access to applications, both in the cloud and on-premises to your, to your users across different device types, um, and protect the data itself, right? So we do that through the product we call Microsoft Enterprise Mobility Plus Security, or shortly EMS. That's the team I work on. Um, and there's a lot of stuff we do as part of this product, but I will focus on three key scenarios that I thought might be um, interesting to you today, and because I have limited time as well. So, the, those three common use cases that our customers um, uh, work with us are, hey, help us to protect um, us at the door, which means basically, can we manage access to our resources um, from different devices to our resources in the cloud and on-premises? So 
You heard about this technology from Brad and Dean over the last two days. We call it conditional access. This is where uh, we partner with Jamf as well for uh, your device compliance for Mac. Um, the second um, use case is being able to protect your data anywhere, right? Again, I mentioned that more and more customers now come to Microsoft and other vendors in the market and say, hey, I have my email in the cloud now. I have my applications across different devices. How can you help us make sure that the data doesn't go into the places that IT no longer has control? And then the last thing, which is becoming more and more and more important to a lot of customers in the world is being able to detect attacks um, and actually respond to them. And when I say attacks, I mean specifically for user identities. Uh, because based on the research we've done, uh, the vast majority of compromises you hear in the past few years, you know, be, uh, be that Equifax or Target or other companies, if you find a root cause, usually it comes to, be, by, it comes to identity being compromised. So one user account, his or her account was, uh, you know, credentials were stolen or compromised, and then the hackers are able to penetrate the whole network and the whole system. So how can we help you figure out if you, your user account is compromised or not? So I'm gonna start with uh, the first um, use case. This is what we call conditional access. And um, again, we have a somewhat unique view of how you manage access. And the reason why we have this unique view is because we recognize that the world that no longer lives in a place where all of your data is on premises. The majority of customers that Microsoft works with now, we have our customers' data in our cloud and other clouds as well, right? From Google, Amazon, um, Salesforce, Workday, and so on. So when we talk about access management, we don't talk about building gateways or, or on-premises servers. We talk, we talk about being able to use the identity as that new control point and use the identity of the user to figure out if that person has access to your resources or not, both in the cloud and on-premises. And our goal is to give you the controls to figure out under what conditions that person can actually access your resources, right? Be that email, applications, or files, and so on. Um, so things like is device manager compliant? For example, stuff that we do with Jamf on Mac devices, but we do it on other operating systems as well. Um, is the user coming from a location that's allowed? For example, you can say if the user is coming from United States, that's fine. But if the user is coming from China, enforce multi-factor authentication just to be extra secure so the user account is not compromised. The, there are multiple other conditions that I'll show you in the demo, but the cool thing that um, I think Microsoft has a unique position here is that we have uh, trillions of data points or signals that we can analyze using our machine learning algorithms and figure out how risky the user account is. And based on that risk of the user account or the same activity itself, we can automatically um, inf enforce um, things like multi-factor authentication, block access to resources, or limit access. You can say, hey, your user account at the moment, based on our al algorithm, seems risky. You can access your email or files in, for example, OneDrive for Business, but you can only view them and nothing else. So I'll show you, um, you've seen the demo that we do for Mac devices um, um, with Jamf. Uh, I think we showcased that, that during the keynote yesterday and also if you were at the expo hall, you were able to see that as well. I'll show you a demo on iOS devices that we do for, um, in this case, um, uh, Exchange Online or F65 for email. So this is a unmanaged iPad. Um, let's see if it plays. Yep, so the scenario here, this is unmanaged iPad. Um, you can see that there is no management profile, so it's not managed by MDM. In this case, Microsoft MDM or any other MDM. And I'm trying to access my um, uh, Office 365 email or Exchange Online from the cloud. In this case, I added my Outlook.com, so my personal email, it works fine. But I'm trying to add my company email. In this case, it can be your school or, uh, you know, if you're an enterprise customer, it can be your enterprise account. Um, this is my demo tenant, entering my uh, username, then I'll enter my password. And what you'll see in a second is that because we have a policy in Microsoft Intune, which is our, uh, well, our MDM tool, the access to email will not be allowed because we say that in order to access uh, email in our, in our company, you have to have your device managed and compliant. For example, in this case, Intune does the work for you. The same process works for your Mac devices when we work with Jamf Pro, for example. Um, Jam actually manages the Mac device, and it helps us to ensure that device is compliant. Uh, make sure that there's encryption, for example, it has the, long, the password is there, and so on. And all this works, again, without any on-premises infrastructure. This is a pure cloud um, technology developed between Exchange Online, Intune, and our identity service, which is Azure AD. In this case, 
I can enroll into Intune, which, is, which means make this device uh, managed, and then Intune will make sure that device is compliant. Um, another use case is using iOS native email client. Again, the same process works here as well. Even if I try to use access my um, Exchange Online here, access is not allowed. Uh, end user gets one email saying, hey, we know you're trying to access, but the IT policy does not allow you to do it. Um, so that's what you can see um, in this demo as well. And another common use case for people to access email is by being able to access it from um, their browser. So in a second, you'll see that um, I will launch a Safari browser on iOS and try to access Exchange Online or Office 365 um, email from Safari browser on a managed device. Same process works here as well. I will enter my same user account, same password, and the access will be blocked. So again, um, this is the technology we call conditional access. This is the piece specifically for device compliance. It works across all the operating systems, and this is where we partner with Jamf uh, for Mac devices. Um, but again, it works across Android, Windows, um, and obviously Mac. Um, so the next demo I'll show you is how to actually configure this from the admin console. So I'll switch to Safari. This is the, um, our admin experience for EMS. So this is the Azure portal where um, customers can access their other Azure services. For example, being able to manage your VMs or SQL databases and so on. There's probably 100 different services that Azure provides to our customers. But this is where, where we also have admin experiences for um, EMS, specifically for um, Azure AD. This is our identity access management solution, so being able to manage your identities in the cloud. Uh, Microsoft Intune, which is our uh, mobile device application and you know, PC, Mac device management solution. And also a technology we call Azure Information Protection that helps to encrypt your files and protect them on any device, basically. It's independent of the device itself. So for conditional access, I'll show you what you can do uh, from a uh, management perspective. So I'll create a new policy. And again, this is a HTML5 based admin console, so you can use any browser, uh, any modern browser that supports HTML5. Um, you can select user groups that you want to target this conditional access policy for. This is the same security groups that are, are in Office 365 because the back end of Office 365 is Azure AD. Um, you can decide which applications you want to protect. And again, I showed you Exchange online. You can select um, basically nearly 3,000 other applications, so we, we automatically federate with nearly all major cloud applications like you know Google, Salesforce, Dropbox, Box, obviously Office, uh, Microsoft services, and more, as well as your on-premises web apps as well. So you can manage access to even your on-prem web apps with single sign-on without having to use VPN or other on-premise infrastructure. We enable that through Azure AD as well. Um, then you can define conditions. So you can figure out so under which conditions a user can access uh, your application. So the sign-in sign risk is the cool one. As I mentioned, this is where we use our machine learning capabilities and the you know, billions of data points we have across Microsoft and non-Microsoft services to figure out how risky the user or the sign activity itself is. Um, for device platforms, we covered this. This is where, uh, again, we work with Jamf. Um, you can figure out location. So based on location of the user, you can, deforce, you can enforce a different access policy. And you can specify which apps you want, people, you, you want to allow people to use. So for example, you can say, I'm only allowing um, Outlook on iOS access to be able to access Exchange Online and nothing else. So you can specifically say that in your company, you only allow a specific app, mobile app in this case, um, to access your um, email or files. Um, and then based on these conditions, you can figure out what controls you want to enforce. So you can either block it if you want to, or you can allow access, but then either require multi-factor authentication, so a text, a phone call, um, or app. We have an app across um, operating systems that you can use as a second factor authentication. You can require the device to be compliant. Again, this is that where Jamf helps us on Mac devices, and some other conditions as well. So again, this is a technology we call conditional access. Again, it's part of our larger EMS uh, offering, and um, a lot of customers um, find this really exciting because, again, they don't have to build on-premises infrastructure. This is a fully uh, cloud-powered uh, technology. Um, let me switch back to my PowerPoint. Full screen. Okay. So 
to skip this one. So that was the first scenario. I'm gonna go to the second one where, um, so you, you're able to manage access, right? Now the question comes, how can Microsoft in this case help us to make sure the data stays protected across different devices, on premises, and in the cloud? And that's how we have set up, dif set up different technologies across our EMS uh, product to help you with that. So for example, on mobile devices, uh, we have a technology called Internet App Protection, where it helps you to figure out what can users do with your data on mobile devices and within the mobile apps themselves. So can they move, for example, copy data from a, a managed application like Outlook to a personal app like Gmail, for example, or not? Because again, that might be risky from security point of view. Um, so, so I'll show you that in a demo. The second thing, can you help us to figure out what cloud applications or SaaS applications our employees are using and help us manage our data there. So for example, if people are accessing um, Salesforce or Dropbox or other uh, services and that it's storing company data there, we can help you figure out first what apps they're actually using in your company. When I say apps, I mean cloud, so SaaS applications. And number two, we help you to manage and protect as well. And I'll show you um, in, a, in a demo in a moment as well. And the, uh, another very important question, especially for sensitive and confidential information is, how can you help us protect our data basically anywhere where we don't have control anymore? And that's where the technology, what we call um, Azure Information Protection, can help you with that. It basically encrypts the files themselves and the protection travels with the file. So it doesn't matter where the file ends up being, you know, even if the file is forwarded or, or, or a device is stolen and somebody's trying to access that file, only the, the person who was granted access to that file can actually access that file. And again, that's because all of our solutions are focused on having an identity of the user. So based on the identity of the user, we can enforce, enforce these controls. Um, so let me show you a demo. Um, this is a, a managed app now. And because it's a managed app, um, I have my applications deployed. In this case, mobile apps on iOS. But I'll show you how we help you with some data protection technology. So first, You'll notice that I open Outlook. I'm able to have my company email and my personal email now in Outlook. And now I'll be able to choose all my company emails and try to copy some data here. So again, this is where we're using the technology intune to make sure the data stays within your control. So I copied some data, which is my company data. In this case, open Notes app on iOS and try to paste that now into an unmanaged application. As you'll see in a moment, the operation will not be allowed, and the end user will get a message saying, hey, your organization does not allow this, because that's the policy we set in the EMS, saying we don't want company data to go into the places we don't have control, and we cannot manage Notes app, because it's a you know, iOS app that does not allow this, for example. If I open another managed application, in this case, Microsoft Word, you will see in a moment that this operation will be allowed, because the policy in turn allows the transfer of data between managed applications. And again, Intune does this for nearly all Microsoft applications on iOS and Android, um, as well as some third-party apps. And you can make this work for your applications as well. So if, you're, if you have your line of business applications, you can make this technology work for uh, your applications as well. Again, on iOS and Android, and for Windows 10, we uh, leverage the Windows technology, the platform technology to protect data. The thing here now, if you try to save this file now, you'll notice that that operation is not allowed because I'm trying to save this to my OneDrive personal. The same thing error would happen if I'm trying to save it to Dropbox or anything else because, again, the company policy does not allow me to move company data into personal. If I try to save it to OneDrive for business, it worked because OneDrive for business, it's allowed. It's a company data storage. And again, you can choose which data storage location is your company. So if you're, if you're using Dropbox, you can allow saving files, the company fails to Dropbox. Um, one more item here, this is where we're able to help you protect data at the file level, right? So the file itself is encrypted. So you'll notice now, when I try to open this within um, iOS, it cannot open it because the file is encrypted. If I try to open this now in PowerPoint, you will be able to open this file because again, the PowerPoint is using my identity, so chrislincantosobuild.com, and based on the policy for this file, Chris can't access this, this file. But the cool, cool thing about this is that not only I can access this file, the person who shared this file with me set specific controls. So I can view the file, I can edit the file, but I'm not allowed to like, copy or print or delete if I'm, for example, on a Windows device. So you, are, you have controls per file as well. So that's, again, part of EMS. And 
what we see from our customers, this might not be the solution for all of your files in your company, but for some of the confidential, like your HR, finance, or research and development, this might be a solution to use as well. Um, let me show you now um, how we can help you protect data in your SaaS applications, um, so your cloud apps. So let me switch to Safari. So this is a, um, a company we acquired about a year ago from Israel, um, and we renamed the product to Cloud App Security. So this product basically helps you to figure out what SaaS applications your employees are using and help you to make sure that they're not doing something stupid, right? So first, um, this is a dashboard where you can kind of see, based on the behavior analysis of the tool itself, it kind of gives you a, a view of stuff that's happening in your environment, right? So maybe somebody's trying to compromise the account or they're trying to download the files on their last day of employment and then who knows what they're gonna do with that stuff. So it kind of uses those typical scenarios to figure out if somebody's not doing, uh, if somebody's doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Then you can also, as I mentioned, discover which applications are being used in your, uh, in your company. So in this demo environment, you can see we have multiple applications that are being used. And the cool thing here is that you can also figure out um, uh, the, we give you a score. So how safe is this application? based on the security protocols they support and based on the compliance that they support. So that way you don't have to do that yourself. We do that research basically for you. And, and if you have many applications that your employees are using, and typically for larger companies, there can be thousands of apps that people are using, this can save uh, time for you because again, we do the research for you. I think we have a database of, um, I believe about 17,000 apps that we know of, and we can also give you a score for them as well. Again, based on security and uh, compliance. Um, the next thing you can also do is actually figure out what they're actually doing within those apps with your company data. And this is where um, this service, it's a cloud service, integrates with the APIs of other SaaS applications like Google G Suite or Salesforce or Microsoft services and many other to figure out what specifically the users are doing. So again, depending on what the, that SaaS application allows us to see, we can expose the information for you, and you can take action um, based on this information. You can also create policies to automatically detect stuff. So for example, in your organization, you can say, I don't want people to store credit card or social security or any other type of information um, within files that are exposed externally, right? So this is a, a test file here that has critical information because the policy was able to find that on OneDrive for Business. We can see that clearly this is a test file, so we, shouldn't, we, we probably don't care about this thing. But if you are worried, you have ability to actually um, either remove the file when it comes, I mean, I mean remove, remove sharing, or block the user or quarantine the user. So again, with, without going to um, G Suite or OneDrive for Business, you can make actions here to make sure that your company is compliant, that customer data, for example, is not exposed uh, externally. Um, so this is cloud app security, and again, it's part of EMS. Um, I go back to PowerPoint. I think I'm doing fine on time. Okay, so I showed you that. And the third uh, scenario that I wanted to cover with you today is um, being able to detect uh, and respond to attacks. And again, I'm specifically mentioning user because we're focusing on really securing the identity of the user, both in the cloud and on-premises. And um, this question is a really interesting one because when we talk to our, a lot of customers, they are usually pretty confident that they can you know, detect attacks against their corporation. But based on the third-party research that I've read so far, on average, it takes about 200 days for companies to detect that they've been compromised. So basically for you know, more than half of the year, companies are compromised, they, didn't, they don't even know about it. And then it takes another 60 to 90 days to actually fix that if it's a significant attack. And if you have read news in the past year, you probably noticed that a lot of companies have been compromised. They don't know about it for months. And then it takes them another month to tell us uh, if, if they're nice enough to tell us, actually. So Microsoft also, I believe, has a unique position here. Again, we're one of the very few companies in the world that have access to multiple cloud services, uh, more than a billion of Windows devices that, that we manage, the Windows Update, for example, billions of emails that we also can secure for our customers in the cloud, and so on. So, and one of the key things also is that because 
Azure AD is an authentication source for Office 365, also for, your, uh, for our public services, so consumer services like Xbox, Outlook, uh, and so on. We have this wealth of data that we are able to gather and actually analyze that and help you to figure out if your user account is compromised or not. Uh, and it's not just the data we use and the machine learning that we use in the cloud. We also have specific teams, security teams within Microsoft that um, try to figure out bots, for example, bot networks, try to search on dark web to see what user accounts and passwords are stolen and being sold. We actually buy them sometimes to figure out which ones are being sold. And then we compare it to our customers to figure out if the user accounts from our customers are compromised and actually being sold uh, in, a, in a dark web. So we have a few technologies to help um, our customers with that. So one is obviously identity in the cloud. This is where Azure AD, again, uses all that knowledge um, that I showed you on the previous slide. And we kind of call that knowledge Microsoft Intelligence Security Graph. And a lot of our technologies use that graph to figure out you know, security attacks. So uh, we can help you with identities in the cloud. And again, this identity can be used not just to access Microsoft resources, we, as I mentioned, we federate with more than 3,000 uh, cloud services. So you can use that one identity for your employees to access not just Microsoft stuff, but Facebook, Google, Dropbox, and so on. Um, we also can help customers to protect identity on premises. So we have a solution called, uh, which is part of EMS as well, called Advanced uh, Threat Analytics, and basically analyzes your on-premises Active Directory, because a lot of customers still use on-prem um, Active Directory. It, it's able to analyze this um, uh, silently to figure out if your user accounts on-premises have been uh, compromised as well. So again, uh, because so many customers still have on-prem AD, we have a solution um, uh, for our customers as well. And the tool that I showed you a moment ago, the Cloud App Security, can also analyze the behavior of the users within the cloud applications to figure out if something abnormal is happening. Again, the idea here is that um, we use that behavioral analysis, machine learning technologies to figure out if something doesn't look right. That's the direction that Microsoft is going for users, but also uh, if you look at the things that we do on Windows, for example, we use very similar technologies. And you can see the same stuff um, coming from other vendors uh, in the market as well. So this demo uh, is a pretty cool one. So this is a Tor browser. Um, if you don't know what Tor is, Tor basically makes your IP anonymous, so that way you can access either dark web or normal websites without the service knowing what your IP address is, right? So I'm using this Tor browser now to access uh, Exchange Online, and you will see that my IP now is anonymous because it was bounced between a few countries. But I'll be able to, I'm trying to access um, Exchange Online using the same Chris account I've used in previous demos. And what you will see in a moment is that because we know at Microsoft that more than 70% of the time that somebody tries to use Tor to access Microsoft services, they're trying to do something, uh, something bad. And based on that, just purely on that fact, we automatically basically make this request to sign into Office 365 risky. And based on the policy I said, so this is a conditional access policy, I said, if the user or sign activity is risky, enforce multi-fact authentication. So what you saw here in a moment was exactly that, where because this is a risky sign-in activity to Microsoft services, I'm required to provide my second factor authentication, in this case, a phone call. So if I answer the phone call, which I didn't record after this, I will be able to access, um, uh, in this case, an email. And again, the cool thing about conditional access is that the same stuff we discussed earlier in the keynote with Jamf as well is that it's not just about blocking access, also guiding the end user uh, to be able to access, but also make sure that the company data stays protected. So let me show you now the admin experiences. Um, that way you can see how this can be configured. So Safari. Um, go back to EMS console. So you can see that in, in my console, I can expose some of the information that I find important to me. That way I can see the first time I log into my, uh, my admin console. But I'm gonna take a look at uh, technology in this case, uh, what we call Azure AD identity protection. But again, this is the technology that uses machine learning to figure out how risky the user or um, the sign activity itself is. And what you can see here on the screen is that it gives me information about users that are flagged to be risky. So again, based on the uh, machine learning that we use, we, we tell you this user seems suspicious for different reasons. You can also see um, what kind of issues I have at the user level. So for example, if 
I have um, administrators that are not um, using their admin accounts. For example, I create an admin account, but nobody has used it for many days. Why don't you just disable it? Why you have an admin account that's not being used? So things like that it can help you to make your uh, environment more secure. I can also take a look at risk events. So it gives me a, an idea of what kind of risk events I have, right? So for example, um, a very common one, if somebody's trying to, as I showed you in a previous demo from Tor Browser, um, access your resources from an anonymous IP address, right? That, that might be suspicious. And I can have a list of users that have tried to access your company resources from IP addresses that are anonymized. So again, that might be okay, because they might be in China, and they want the Chinese government to read their stuff, so using Tor to access company stuff. But at the same time, this might be suspicious because the user account could be possibly compromised. So you could take action based in, on that information. And you can also have a, a list view of the users uh, that are, uh, you know, have potential risk for you to take a look at. So for example, if I look at Mike, I can see why, would this, why we think his account is risky, right? We give you a, basically a timeline of what happened to this user account that made our machine learning algorithm to, to think that this user account is risky. And if you're not comfortable, you can reset the password. And that way, if somebody compromised that user account, reset the password and you, know, you can either contact your user directly or let him or her contact you and figure out, hey, why am I able to access this? Assuming um, his or her account is not compromised. Um, so that was, again, this is part of EMS. I'm just showing you some of the admin experiences. Let me show you, let me go back to PowerPoint. I have a few more slides and then I will answer your questions. So I showed you this. I show you this one too. So this is just one slide to kind of give you a quick overview of what EMS is, right? It's a, a combination of integrated cloud services um, for uh, user management, device management, um, being able to manage your applications, so mobile apps, Windows apps, SaaS applications, on-prem apps, and so on. And also, because we believe that identity is super important in this new world, we put a lot of security work into making sure that the identity that your users are using are protected and not, are not compromised. And there is a, like a saying at Microsoft that Microsoft might be one of the biggest security companies you've never heard of. We spend more than a billion dollars every year on security technologies. It just traditionally, you, you haven't th thought about Microsoft as a security company because we're focused on Windows, focused on Office. But for the past few years, if you start looking at the technologies that we, we have been working on, security is a core focus for the whole company across Office, across Windows, across Azure, and any other um, services and products that Microsoft creates. From a um, licensing point of view, um, it's a per user per month license. So we have two SKUs, one is E3, one is E5. And in general, E3 SKU gives you the productivity experiences across devices and being able to manage devices too. And E5 SKU is focused on security. So securing the identity of the user, because again, more and more organizations are really um, concerned about uh, having the ability to protect themselves uh, against either organized hacking groups or in, in many cases now governments as well, as you probably heard from news. Um, we also help you with deployment because we're a cloud service. Um, for us, sales, it's thing of the past, right? In the past, because we're a box solution, our goal was to sell it and be done with it now. Now, because we're a cloud service, consumption is more important. So if the people are not using our services, we have a lesser chance of actually being renewed uh, from the customer. So we focus on helping customers being su successful just how Jamf does it as well. So as part of the subscription, you have Microsoft engineers helping you to get started uh, with our services and including support too. That way, if things don't, well, don't work well, uh, we'll help you to get, uh, get them fixed as well. Um, one last thing is um, EMS is a management security part of, uh, uh, I guess, mobility experiences at Microsoft, but we are part of the larger um, strategy, larger goal, it's which we, what we call modern workplace, and we call it Microsoft 365. This is the, where our idea is to be able to deliver a, a modern workplace solution to uh, commercial customers, education customers, um, uh, factory uh, workers, for example, we call it first line, um, and so on. So again, even though I showed you EMS today, 
our focus is much larger, where we focus on helping and working with Office and Windows teams to deliver that modern experiences uh, to our customers. Um, on that, I think that's all I had um, to cover in my presentation. I hope I am not too late. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them as well. Wonderful. Big round of applause here for Brian. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So um, we do have two microphones set up if you'd like to uh, ask any questions. There's some great information coming here. It's really nice to see uh, Microsoft working with Jamf to provide yep. these great experience for uh, Apple users out yep. there. Um, so while we wait for uh, folks to, to come up here to uh, ask questions, uh, so I'm a, I'm a Jamf administrator and I want to do all this cool stuff uh, with conditional access that we talked about yep. earlier in the, in the presentation. Uh, what sort of licensing do I need uh, from Microsoft, from EMS, right. to make all of this work? It's a good question. So um, our licensing, again, we, as I mentioned, we focus on the user and the mobility of the human himself or herself. So our license is user-based, so per user per month, across EMS and across other Microsoft products like Office 365 or Windows 10. So from Jamf perspective, um, if you get EMS E3 SKU, that would work just fine uh, for Mac uh, device compliance and how we work with you on, on, that, on that front. So that should be sufficient enough. That's great. That's great. Do we have any other questions uh, from the audience here? Now's the time to ask some great, hard-hitting Microsoft be questions. Be nice. No. Be nice. <laughs> We're all go. friends. Hey there. So um, all this is going to require in tune, such as like the, uh, um, like the, the app, uh, what am I even trying to say, uh, the cloud app. Mm -hmm. uh, information, you, you'd need Intune to do that, right? So Intune is um, just part of uh, EMS, right. right? So Intune is our device management solution um, for managing your Windows, Android, as well as Apple devices too. Uh, but if you're looking at uh, figuring out the cloud applications, for example, that requires EMS license and EMS product overall mm -hmm. because um, Intune is focused on managing devices versus cloud app security, for example, focused on helping you to discover SaaS applications and what people are doing with them. So does that mean it's using the identity to get that information? I'm just trying to understand the workflow. For cloud app security? Yeah. Um, we use basically the, the tool itself uses the uh, web logs or logs from your uh, reverse proxy or gateway, for example, and basically is able to analyze that to figure out what applications employees access. In the future, we're working on adding agents so you can have agents on the endpoints and get the information from there as well. So some customers prefer having it from um, reverse proxies, for example. Some customers like to have agents. So we have one, and we're working on the second option as well. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Got another question? Hi. Hi. So Hello. on our Windows endpoints, we currently use cert-based authentication to allow access to Office 365. Mm -hmm. So that hasn't been implemented on the Mac side yet because... Uh, it, it was just recently fixed, the ADA libraries. So I'm just wondering what the potential interactions are between the CBA and the Intune EMS stuff that uh, you've, you've discussed. Is, is there a way to tie that in? Because that is the original intent of the implementation on, on our side. Um, can you repeat the question, sir? Gonna... <laughs> just get a little closer to the yeah. mic, too. Right. That helps. Right, sorry. So um, we use cert-based authentication um, okay. to allow access to Office 365 apps mm -hmm. on Windows endpoints. Yep. So the, on the Mac side, that hasn't been implemented yet because the ADA li libraries have just recently been fixed to take advantage of cert-based auth. So, um, yes, I think for the cert-based auth, um, at least on, we have that across Android, iOS, and Windows. I know we're working much more Mac now, and one of the first phases was the conditional access that we enabled, and that's where we partner with Jamf in that space as well. Um, I don't know specifically about the cert based auth on Mac itself, but Mac is becoming an important platform for Microsoft as well as an endpoint, so you'll see more and more uh, focus in this space from both the device management and identity management uh, as well. But if you have more, if you have specific information, we can maybe talk offline, I can get your information, and then we can link with people inside of Microsoft. Okay, great. Okay, cool, thanks. Great question, thank you. Do we have any other questions from the audience? I see one more coming right. up here. Thank you. Um, my question is in regards to, I guess, wiping the applications off a device. Most of the applications, when they get managed, they say that it'll end up wiping the whole device. Okay. Can it just remove the Office applications off of it through Intune? 
Yeah, so um, our model, I'm pretty sure it's very similar to what Jump does as well, that you have an option to remove, re reset the whole device, so wipe the whole device if you want to, be that you know, Windows, Android, or other operating systems, or you can do what we call selective wipe, where you remove the company data, so apps, email, and so on, but you don't touch the personal data. So for a lot of BYO, these scenarios, that's important because you don't want people to come to you and say, hey, why did you delete my pictures and my text? So we support that as well, three in tune. Okay, great, thanks. Great Thank question, you. great question. We have time for about maybe one more. All right. Perfect. Make sure you get close to the mic too, that helps. Hi. Hello. I already understand the um, limitation of the iOS device being managed by a single management system. Mm -hmm. We'd like to go to Intune, but I don't want to give up using Jamf. Um, so as a partnership, um, hopefully not an acquisition, but will that happen anytime soon? Is there a collaboration toward that effort? So um, our goal with Jamf was really for Mac, because again, Jamf is a leader clearly in Mac management space, and you have multiple different vendors managing your iOS, Android, and Windows device, for example, right? So our um, goal um, at the moment is uh, keep working with Jamf on really expanding this Mac device compliance partnership that we announced uh, at Ignite a few weeks ago. Um, beyond that, we don't really have it. I don't, I'm not aware of any other plans. But um, f at least for the audience here, like uh, I know many of you are using Jamf for managing your Apple ecosystem. And again, my goal was to basically help you understand what we do on other operating systems. That you, when you think about, if you, need ha if you have a need to manage Windows or Android devices, you'll consider EMS versus some of the other EMM vendors in the market. Yeah, it's a great question. And you know, the way that we view it too is, of course, uh, use us for Mac, use uh, Microsoft for everything else. iOS may just end up being somewhere in between. Yep. Uh, whatever works best for you as an organization. That's the best marketing spin answer I can give yep. to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All right, everyone, I think that about does it. Appreciate it. Uh, the next session here is at four o'clock and it's a panel on packaging. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Vlad.